So far Sundara Chola has been talking about a third person like someone else. Now he started telling the story of his life. My beautiful daughter. Today I will tell you something that normally a father should not tell his daughter. I will tell you something that I have never told anyone before. Only one person in this world, my friend Anuradha, knows this, he does not know the whole thing. He does not know the struggle that is going on in my mind right now. But you I am going to tell you everything. Someone in our family must know. I can't tell your mother. I have been meaning to tell you for some time. Today is the day. You will not laugh at my condition, let me tell you. From that island I climbed the wood and went to Kadakar. I came straight here knowing that my father Parintaka Chakraborty was then staying in this Tanjore palace. My father has loved me since I was a child. He kept me with him in the palace for a long time without sending me anywhere. After being stubborn and taking leave of him, I went to Elam. My father's heart was broken when he learned that I was not among those who returned from there. As he did not know that I was dead, he was sending men in droves to look for me. At last a crowd found me. When I arrived at Tanjore, he felt some peace in his wounded mind. Somehow he had a hope that the Chola Empire, which had fallen in his dying days, would be restored by me. That hope had been fostered by the soothsayers. Fittingly, though he had four sons, I was the only grandson in his twilight years. On the verge of death, the emperor called me close and sniffed and burst into tears. He repeatedly said, Father. After me, your great-grandson Kandaradatta will ascend the throne. After him, this Chola kingdom will reach you. It is only in your time that this Chola clan will become great again. He said. He promised me that the ideal of my life should be to uphold the supremacy of the Chola country. If great-grandfather gives birth to a boy, how will the kingdom come to me? I heard that some people in the kingdom were talking about this at that time. But it seems that my great father, the Mahatma, wanted no one to have such doubts. After the death of Parintaka Chakraborty, Kandaratitha was consecrated. At the same time, my great-grandfather, the new emperor, had arranged for the Uvarajya Bhattapashekam to take place for me too. What justification do we have to worry about a mute girl living in the middle of the jungle on a blind island somewhere? Does the happiness of so many people matter? Does the life of only one dumb girl matter? That one face alone appeared in front of my eyes like the image of Goddess Parmswari. My head is spinning, the legs became weak, memory failed. I asked him to send men to search the roads leading to the coast outside the Tanjore fort. People went in many different ways. They went to the beach and searched. Those who went to Kadakare found a mute woman in the lighthouse keeper's house there. She looked like she was mad. No amount of trying to convey the matter to her was of any avail. She absolutely refused to come with them to Tanjore. When they brought this news, I was at a loss as to what to do. I was in that confusion for two days. Even though he couldn't forget her. The memory was the same day and night. Couldn't sleep even a moment at night. Then I took Anuradhan and left for Kadakare. I drove the horses as fast as I could. As I went, my anxiety increased. If he found the dumb girl there, then he was confused as to what to do with her. Take me to Tanjore or Padayara and say she is my queen. Say that? When I thought about that, my soul and body became stunted. The wind blew hard. The sea raged and surrounded the lighthouse. The woman stood looking at the turbulent ocean for a while. It was unusual for her to stand like that so no one noticed. Suddenly a sound like wheel was heard defying the sound of the waves. See her later. The two saw a female figure fall upside down from the lamp post into the sea. Even after bringing the boats and looking for them, it was no use. It had to be decided that the raging sea had swallowed the girl. Suddenly a sound like wheel was heard defying the sound of the waves. See her later. The two saw a female figure fall upside down from the lamp post into the sea. Even after bringing the boats and looking for them, it was no use. It had to be decided that the raging sea had swallowed the girl. 
suddenly a sound like wheel was heard defying the sound of the waves. See her later. The two saw a female figure fall upside down from the lamppost into the sea. Even after bringing the boats and looking for them, it was no use. It had to be decided that the raging sea had swallowed the girl. When I heard this news, I felt pain and agony like a spear in my chest. But for a while there was a kind of peace. There was no more question of what to do with her. There was no need to think about it and confuse my mind. I returned to Tanjavur with this strange pang of sorrow and peace. I devoted my mind to the affairs of the kingdom. I went to the battlefields. I married your mother. I had valiant sons. I was also blessed to have you as my daughter. Yet, daughter. I could never forget that dead sinner. Now and then in my dreams the horror the scene I had not seen appeared and troubled me. The figure of a woman leaping headlong from the top of a lighthouse into the waves of the sea was appearing in my dreams and imagination. Whenever I see that horrible scene in my dream, I wake up screaming. People lying next to me say what? What? They will ask. Your mother has asked me many times. But I never told the truth. Sometimes I would say nothing. Or I would imagine the horrors of the battlefield. Eventually, by the mercy of Kaladeva, that horrible scene left my mind, she also left my memory, until recently, I thought I had drifted off. But it seems that the dead are more cruel than the living. Daughter. The spirit of dumbness did not leave me. It's been coming back and bothering me for some time now. My daughter. Do you believe that the Mandavas will recover? After saying this, Sundarakalar fixed his gaze somewhere in the distance and stared. There was nothing in the direction he saw. Yet she saw his body trembling. She felt infinite compassion for him. Tears welled up in the eyes. She buried her face in her father's chest and burst into tears. So his tremors also seemed to subside. Then she looked up at her father and said, Father. You have been suffering for many years by keeping this terrible pain in your mind. Because of that, your body has also deteriorated. You have told me now, haven't you? From now on, your body will be fine. Sundarakala's laughter was mixed with pain and disbelief. Squat. You don't believe. You don't believe that mortals will come again. Yet there, by that pillar, behind the torch, stood the spirit of that sinner last night at midnight. I saw it with my own eyes. How could I not believe it? If what I saw was only an illusion, what would you say of your friend? She fainted when she saw something and asked. Bring her, you squat. I'll find out for myself. Sundara Kalar said excitedly. Father. Vanathi is a frightful girl. I don't know how she was born in the Weeravalir clan of Kajumbalur. Even if she saw the pillar in the dark, she would scream and fall unconscious. There is no use in asking her. She would not have seen anything, she would not have heard anything. But you know what caught my eye? It seemed that the nether clans, dumb ones, had taken the child away. Do you remember that day I lost my memory? Everyone thought I lost my mind because of the danger to the baby. But that is the truth. I will tell you after all these days. I fainted because it seemed to me that the woman who took the child was her spirit form. I've got that power back, squat. Four or five times in the middle of the night she appeared before me and warned me. Kill me. I forgive it. But do not sin again. Do not give to another the kingdom that belongs to one. I understood what she was saying. I knew as clearly as I would know if the power of speech came to her and she spoke with her mouth. My daughter. I must help me to accomplish it. This cursed kingdom, this Chola throne, my sons do not want. Give it to Madhurandha. Kundave then interrupted, Father. What are you saying? What is the need to change what has already been agreed upon by the entire country? Will the world agree even if they change it? She asked. What if the world agrees, what if it doesn't agree? It is my duty to know what Dharma is. 
When I crowned this Chola kingdom as a prince and then as an emperor, my mind was not at peace. My conscience urged me. I, the son of the youngest, was crowned when the son of the eldest was alive. The fruit of that sin is today. I am experiencing. Why should my sons also be subject to such a sin? Adithan does not want this kingdom, neither does he want grace. I do not want the curse that comes with this kingdom. While I am still alive, I must crown Madhurandha. After that, I will go to the golden mansion that Adithan has built in Kanchi and live in peace of mind. Daddy! Won't the big brat agree to this? Daughter! That's why I seek your help. Make my great-grandmother come here for any reason. Aha! Uh -huh. Why does that old woman, who is so knowledgeable, do not know this dharma? Why did she make me commit this sin? Or what anger does she have on behalf of her own child? Mother's unnatural nature. Why is he so adamant about this matter? Madhurand Hagen was saying that he was going to become an ascetic by engaging in some kind of devotion to Shiva. Now, how can he give the title to someone else when he himself wants to rule the kingdom? Father! One may desire to rule the kingdom, should one not deserve it? Why is there no merit? How can a son born to the great Kandaradathar and the daughter of the great sage Malavaraya be without merit? Let there be merit, shall not the citizens of the kingdom consent to it? If you ask the opinion of the drunkards, they will say that your brother should be crowned at once. Is that fair? Will as I agree to it? That's a vain idea, daughter. Somehow get your great-grandmother here quickly. Write and send that I am struggling with Yama if you want to see me alive. Tell him to leave immediately. That's not necessary, father. The big brat has a desire to restore the temple of Tanjore. I will mention it and send it to him at this time. Until then, be patient and don't worry about it, father. Saying this, she bade farewell to her father and went to her abode. On the way he met Mother Vanamadavi. Mother. Do not leave my father even for a moment from now on. Let others go and do the pujas that have to be done. She said. The doubts that had been brewing in Kundave's mind for some time were now beginning to gain some clarity. A little light began to appear in the dark places. Her knowledge made her well aware that some terrible magical plot was afoot against her father and brothers. But she could not fully understand what kind of trick it was and how it all worked. She realized that the Chola Empire and her brother's claim to that kingdom was in danger. She also believed that it was her responsibility as a woman to protect them from that danger.